here's some of the mind maps that we made on a variety of different concepts when we're working on this video. So just wanna kinda of show you up front what you're gonna be able to make after we go over how to actually make all these mind maps in ChatGPT to help your study process. I'm gonna show you how to use this custom GPT to develop mind maps that will help you study. We're gonna dive right into it. So what you do is just dis just describe any sort of concept to the GPT, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna make you one of these cool visuals. So these visuals typically look like this. They can look a couple different ways, but basically when you describe a complex problem to them, what they'll do is they'll give you this sort of output that uh, is, is really helpful to kind of sort your ideas out and explain things and you can be as detailed as you want in sort of getting uh, a better answer out of these. So just as an example, I'm going to say, provide me a diagram that explains how network uh, encryption works to somebody who doesn't know anything about computers or networking or cybersecurity. So let's say that you're just starting out and you're learning something about cybersecurity or whatever, you have a class on it, and you just want a diagram that can help you understand this concept of kind of how encryption works or just in general, just sort of parse through an idea. So you'll get something like this and it'll be basically a bunch of bubbles that'll just be mapping out all these different concepts and how they work together. So what you can do is you could maybe say, uh, something like you know, there's this bubble right here. We could use that to kind of springboard into another way to do this. We could say, uh, explain to me how data travels over a network and then how network encryption interacts with that and actually creates the encryption process. Like I want a diagram that actually shows me how that works between the computers and I want it to be very simple to understand. So cool, that right there, we're gonna see what that looks like. Cool, so this will give you something like that. So it has a sender receiver transmission with encryption. Uh, it just basically describes all the steps about how the encryption works, um, secure data exchange. And then what you could do is you could just prompt and you could just ask for any sort of um, additional kind of explaining to happen inside of the diagram. And it doesn't have to be anything computer related. I could say, create me a mind map of the Renaissance period and I want you to describe to me all of the nearby art movements and all of the artists involved in the Renaissance. And we'll see what we get with that. Okay, very cool. So we've got a mind map here. We have uh, just a different breakdowns of like what the Renaissance was with different movements it had, uh, you know, where, what it influenced and some of the artists and kind of in their little pockets here of the Northern high and early Renaissance. I could even do something like this. I could say, describe for me Tesla as a company and how they are publicly traded and where their money comes from and what their main products are. So this is more of like a kind of financial look at like, what is Tesla? What is that company? You know, where are they publicly traded? What uh, exchanges, et cetera. All right, so we have this diagram here and it breaks down just all the things that we talked about. So it's just outlining all of that all in one visual so that you can kind of just compartmentalize all the different ideas. You know, hey, what are its main products? Um, those are two subcategories of renewable energy and electric cars. You know, what's the overview of the company? Uh, what sort of revenue revenue sources does it have? It has credits, energy generation and storage and electric vehicle sales. It's traded on NASDAQ and the stock symbol is Tesla. I could even go in here and say, explain to me the main influencers of macroeconomics and some of the ideas and concepts in macroeconomics. And this is pretty cool. I've actually never seen this before. This is providing two different responses and it's saying which response did I prefer out of these two. So off the top, I'm gonna to look at these real quick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I actually prefer this second one because it's a little bit easier of a visual. I'll click on that, cool and we have our mind map. 
All right, cool. So here's our macroeconomics mind map. It's just laying everything out for us. It's showing all the theories, key concepts, key influencers, and then applications where it's applied. I could even do something like this where I could say, explain to me the top natural sources of potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Give me any naturally occurring sources that would be available in a household or uh, for a gardener who wants to build their soil up or uh, on a farming operation. Uh, tell me any sort of organic sources that could be gathered and used to enrich the soil. So this is really more of like a soil science type thing. It's really talking about uh, you know, something completely different than, you know, we were talking about technology now we're talking about dirt, right? So you can map any of these concepts out and then you can dive deeper and really begin to like drill in and ask questions and get mind maps on more specific concepts. All right, cool. So here's our breakdown of our different uh, potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen sources. It's giving us all sorts of um, different ones we could get, like banana peels and coffee grounds and wood ash. And it's just like, hey, you know, here's here's exactly what we asked for. And we're, we're talking about dirt, but it's mind mapping it for us. And we could, you know, then dive deeper into, you know, like a kind of um, evolution of this question. We could say, uh, where are the main sources of industrialized phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, and how are those things produced on an industrial scale? So we're gonna ask like, hey, what, you know, forget about just like naturally occurring ones, like how do you actually get, you know, like that stuff in bulk? Okay, cool, so this is breaking down all of the more industrial scaled processes, uh, chemical processes, you know, for potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen, all these different things. So um, it's really cool how we can just sort of dive deeper and ask more about it. And then we can take these things and we can keep them. We can use them as like in a PowerPoint or, you know, really whatever we want to use them for. So I hope this was helpful to describe to you kind of how to approach sort of prompting and building these mind maps out in ChatGPT. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos on how to use AI. And I'll see you in the next video.